Here we're going to talk about selection rules for vibrational spectroscopy. The idea is uh, under what conditions can you say that there is a transition? Under what conditions can you say there is not a transition? Well, first we'll consider uh, this fact that the vibration must produce a change in the dipole moment of a molecule in order for there to be a vibrational energy transition. Let's look at that. Here we have a electromagnetic wave coming into the uh, sample. The direction of propagation is this way and the electric field oscillates in this direction here. Lies a transverse wave. And note that this E represents electric field rather than energy. And let's over here put a molecule. Let's uh, say use the carbon dioxide molecule. Here the oscillation is coming this way and we want that to interact with a vibration of the carbon dioxide molecule. Well, Let's look at a couple normal modes. Suppose that uh, this oxygen goes out that way, this oxygen goes out that way, and the carbon remains the same. So initially carbon dioxide does not have a dipole moment and if this oxygen goes that way and the other oxygen goes the opposite way then carbon dioxide still does not have a dipole moment. So this particular normal mode does not produce a fluctuating dipole moment and therefore it can't interact with a fluctuating electric field. Let's look at another um, normal mode. Let's make this oxygen go this way this carbon will go this way and this oxygen will go this way. With these oscillations the center of mass of carbon dioxide doesn't change. Alright, so initially we have carbon dioxide at its equilibrium bond positions does not have a dipole moment. However, as this, moly as this oxygen goes down here and this carbon goes up here, one has a dipole moment and the direction of the dipole moment is this way. And then as the system then goes the other way, goes back to equilibrium, now this will vibrate that way, that will vibrate that way, and this will vibrate up this way and goes back to this state, then uh, the dipole moment changes from some value uh, to back to zero. So as this molecule vibrates, it will produce a fluctuating dipole moment, mu, and that fluctuating dipole moment can interact with the electric part of the incoming electric mag electromagnetic radiation. So that means that the vibration itself must produce a change in the dipole moment. You have to have a fluctuating dipole moment in order for it to interact with the incoming electromagnetic wave. If this electric field is oscillating at the same frequency as you have vibration, then you'll get an absorption of light and you'll have a peak in the absorption spectrum. So that's one uh, gross selection rule that you have to look at. Molecules that, that vibrate, those normal modes that don't produce a change in the dipole moment are not, will not be, as they say, infrared active. They won't produce a, even though it is a normal mode, they won't produce a peak in the absorption spectrum. Now here's another selection rule here. Recall that the intensity of a uh, absorption line, and this holds for rotation, vibrational, and electronic. Let's look at just vibrational here. It, that, that's the transition dipole moment. That's the integral over all space of the wave function of the final state, complex conjugate, dipole moment operator, times the wave function of the initial state, integrated over some space. Now this is the intensity of the absorption line or if we prepare the state in excited, excited state this is related to the intensity of the uh, emission line. So if this is low energy and this is high energy you get absorption. If this is high energy and this is low energy you get emission. Now the transition dipole moment is equal to zero if the integral is equal to zero. And this integral might be equal to zero for 
uh, symmetry reasons or if you're integrating an odd and even function and ideas we talked about before but there are various reasons but if this integral is equal to zero then uh, the transition dipole moment in is equal to zero and the intensity of the absorption line is equal to zero in other words you won't have an absorption line and this will not be equal or d uh, not necessarily equal to zero if the integral is not equal to zero so you can use symmetry arguments or odd and even function arguments argue that this has to be equal to zero and if you can't find an argument why that has to be equal to zero then you say oh well it doesn't have to be equal to zero so that is a selection rule for vibrational spectroscopy however what you do find is that there are some transitions and these are called and I'll put it in quotes forbidden transitions and you actually these are called for vibrational spectroscopy overtones these forbidden transitions are allowed because the approximations we use in deriving this tr uh, selection rule namely that the uh, molecule is oscillating with a harmonic oscillator approximation and so on well that's not absolutely correct and so you're allowed other transitions so what does that mean recall in vibrational uh, spectroscopy you have a series of equally spaced lines and the spacing between the lines is h bar omega and this is the ground state where the vibrational quantum number is equal to zero this is equal to one uh, here this is equal to two and so on so the transition or the selection rule delta nu is plus or minus one it means you can go from a zero to one or a 1 to a 2 or for example you can go from a 2 to a 1 if you have emission and things like that but the change in quantum number has to be 1 however because we're the actual system the reality is not a harmonic oscillator you can actually have here a 0 to 2 in this case a delta nu is equal to 2 it's going up and this is called an overtone also if you look at the separation of these two energy levels and compare it to KT at room temperature this is the on the same scale recall that this is energy going up this way so on the same scale here this is equal to KT at room temperature so KT room temperature is small compared to the energy level separation so what this means is that most of the molecules are in the lowest uh, energy state vibrational energy state nu equals zero so virtually all the intensity you see in the IR spectrum comes from just going from the zero to the one vibrational energy level and then you see maybe double that if you have these overtones present all right so those are two selection rules for infrared spectroscopy for vibrational spectroscopy namely that you have to produce a change in the dipole moment when you vibrate in a normal mode and secondly delta nu is plus or minus one except when it can be plus or minus two four six and so on